Hello everybody and welcome to my Sunday school class. Hallelujah! It's so good that you've chosen to watch the Sunday school class. I'm sure you'll be blessed by it, okay? So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to read the, um, the key verse which comes from Matthew chapter 1 verses 20 through 21. And here's how it reads. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because uh, he will save his people from their sins. Matthew chapter 1. Verse 20b through 21. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you and we praise you that you are such an awesome God. We thank you that this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be exceedingly glad in it. Thank you for a new day where your mercies are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Thank you that you've engraved us in the palms of your hand. Thank you that the very hairs on our head are numbered by you. Thank you that the thoughts you think towards us are more numerous than the grains of sand in the sea. Thank you, Father, that he who knew no sin became sin for us so that we might become the righteousness of God in him. So we praise you, we worship you, we magnify your name. Thank you that you give us peace in the midst of the storm. You've told us not to be anxious about anything, but by prayers, with supplications, and with thanksgiving, to make our requests known unto God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and our minds by Christ Jesus. So, Father, we praise you and we magnify your name, Lord. And, Lord, now we bind every satanic force of hell that would try to hinder the Sunday school class, Lord. We pray a blessing upon each and every hearer of this word and doer of this word. And, Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord. And, Father, that you'd guard my mouth and my tongue to say only those things that are edifying and glorifying to you. For we ask it in Jesus' matchless name. And the church said, Amen. Hallelujah. So the title of our class is The Beginning of a Call. Okay. And uh, so let's, let's go to the scriptures. Uh, the scriptures are coming from... Uh, Matthew 1, 18 through 25, okay? So, here's how it reads. And I'm reading from the NIV version. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. She will give birth to a son. And you are to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. Hallelujah. Now let's continue with verses 24 and 25. 
When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son and he gave him the name Jesus. Hallelujah! So those are the scriptures for today's Sunday school class. And now let's look at the introduction. It says, how many times have you made a weak excuse for not doing what God would have you to do? We're all guilty of that, if you're honest enough. I'm busy. I don't really want to work with that group. That's an inconvenient day for me. I prefer a more visible assignment. No one is going to know whether, uh, whether I do it or not. They didn't want me to do it when I first offered. A long list of excuses never seems to end. Wow. Wow. Mm. But God is not interested in hearing any one of them. Amen. God operates his kingdom by the work and labor of those whom he has gifted and assigned to serve. When God gives you a particular gift, great or small, he expects that you would use that gift to serve and bless others to advance the purpose of his kingdom. Wow! To obey his commands, to fulfill his divine purpose, and or to bring glory to his name whether in or outside the church. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He expects that you use the gift to serve and bless others, to advance the purpose of his kingdom, not my kingdom, to obey his, his commands, to fulfill his divine purpose, and or to bring glory to his name whether in or outside the church. Amen? All right. Often, we are slow to act on what God would have us to do. Why? Because we are shy or perhaps fearful of what others may think or say. Sometimes, God directs us to do things that may be unpopular or difficult for others to accept and to understand. Do you have the courage to say yes to God, even if it costs you the approval of others? Ooh, wow, that's a, that's a good question, right? That's something to think about. Amen? Um, many times we, whatever little service we do, it's like we do it like we're doing God a big favor. And, and, and that's the wrong attitude. Amen. Even though the task to which God called Mary and Joseph would be controversial, listen to this, and difficult, they were willing to do whatever God asked of them. God takes no pleasure in service that is given with a reluctant, half-hearted, or begrudging attitude. Oh, Lord, help us. You know, sometimes we just do things uh, half-heartedly or reluctantly or begrudging attitude, okay? It is a privilege to serve God in whatever He has gifted and called us to do. And... and let me remind people that many times people get jealous of somebody else that who might have more gifts than them. But there's no need for that. Because remember in the parable uh, of the gifts? Uh, uh, that in the parable, the guy who had five gifts got five more. 
The guy who had the two got two more. The guy who had the one buried his gift. So the idea is uh, uh, whatever gifts you have, one or two or three, you just use them for the glory of God and maybe try to try to uh, 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 gain more gifts through your service. Amen. So there's no need for us to be jealous of somebody. You know, I know of uh, uh, very many gifted people in our church. People can play the piano, they can play the organ, they can sing, they can preach, they can teach, they can do all things, you know. But that doesn't make me feel jealous of them. I just do the things that God has gifted me to do. Amen? And if we were to follow that, a lot of the strife in the church would be avoided. Amen? If it's that one single gift, use it for the glory of God. You know, if you're called to be an usher, you know, usher with uh, with uh, great excellence. Amen. So when you stand at the door, you invite people in, greet them in such a way that uh, they'll be glad that they're in church. Amen. And so on and so forth. So we don't have to be jealous of each other. God never told the two gifted person why he didn't get 10 gifts or five gifts. He just wanted the two. Uh, he commended the two gifted person and he got two more. Okay. But the guy with the one gift buried it and did nothing with it. And that's what the Lord hates. Amen. So God uses ordinary people to fulfill his promise and plan for their generation. Sometimes with good intention, we aspire to do things that are beyond the scope of God's will. That's the other extreme. You know, sometimes out of just religious zeal, you know, we try to outdo somebody else. And, and and then we, we end up doing things that we're not even gifted to do. Amen. Some people may want to teach or lead, for example, when God has not called or anointed them to that task. God does not look for ambitious volunteers. God always knows exactly what he needs for any given task. Any woman could bear a child, but God called Mary, a young virgin, a godly woman, who was up to the task of caring for and nurturing God's own son and strong enough to bear the weight of public misunderstanding regarding the child's birth. God has a great divine purpose for this generation. He has already Provided what you need to do what he asks of you. The question is, are you willing? Are you willing and ready to serve? Even when your task seems huge and complicated, let God lead you into sharing his gift. Amen. So that, that is very, very important. Okay. Now, uh, let's go to the biblical content, uh, context. Uh, the name of Jesus means Yahweh saves or God saves. When we say the name Jesus, we are literally speaking of God's salvation. More than a savior, he is our salvation. Amen. He's our salvation. You know, a savior might save one or two people, but salvation is for everyone in the world. So he came for our salvation to set us free from our sin and our guilt and our shame. Amen. And to, and to be accepted by him as sons and daughters of God. How awesome is that? Okay. Uh, he's our salvation. Significant Old Testament figures have variations of the same name. Joshua, who led the people of Israel into the promised land. Hosea, the prophet. And Jeshua, or Joshua, the high priest, instrumental in rebuilding the temple. Uh, see Ezra 31 and 3. I don't have time to go there because we're, we're short on time. Most directly translate their names as Savior of God 
Yahweh, okay, or God's, Yahweh's Savior. Yahweh was the Old Testament word for God. Uh, as opposed to God's, Yahweh's salvation. Hallelujah. So Jesus is Yahweh's salvation, God's salvation. Joseph sought to keep Mary's surprising pregnancy private as he was unwilling to expose her to public shame. Ironically, Mary's son Jesus would publicly shame the great and powerful by triumphing over them in his crucifixion. Hallelujah! Colossians 2 and 15. Let me read Colossians 2 and 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah! He put Satan and his demons to public shame when he rose on the third day from the from the dead. And he had gone into the very depths of hell, taken the keys of hell and Hades, and, and returned triumphant over them. Amen? Wow. Wow. This public shame came amidst Jesus' skillful handling of the direct verbal attacks by Pharisees and Sadducees. He often left them silenced in the midst of the crowds. Remember when they dragged the woman who was caught in adultery and uh, they were trying to trap Jesus because according to the Jewish law, uh, a person like that had to be stoned. But if he said stone her, he would get in trouble with the Roman authorities. And then if he didn't stone her, then he'd get in trouble with the Jewish authorities because he was not adhering to their laws. Amen. And Jesus was riding in the sand and he looked up and he said, He who is without sin, let him cast the first stone. Ooh. Oh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, they took their stones and tunk, tunk, tunk. They threw them down, turned around and walked away. And then he told that woman, Woman, where are thy accusers? Neither do I accuse you. Go and sin no more. Hallelujah! <laughs> if I'd been there, I would have just fallen right then and there and said, He has to be God to come up with such an answer. Wow! Wow! Hey, hey, hey! <laughs> this is awesome, y'all. Okay. Ah. Uh, he often left them silenced, the Sadducees and the Pharisees, in the midst of the crowds. Isaiah gave the original Emmanuel prophecy to King Ahaz of Judah that a child would be born to a young woman as a sign that the political threats Ahaz faced or feared would soon be gone. Amen? Um, so, so we, uh, we know that prophecy. By the way, do you know that there are over 300 to 400 prophecies in the Bible, uh, for uh, Jesus Christ's birth? This is mind boggling. I don't think any other religion that I know of where prophecies were given hundreds of years, uh, before their leader was born. And all those prophecies came to pass. Uh, I don't know of a single religion. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Matthew sought to present Jesus as the anointed one. Called to participate in and bring finality to God's promise. Although David... Uh, uh, Aaron and Elisha were all anointed to represent the throne, the law of God and the prophets, respectively. Only Jesus is the Messiah, the true anointed one. Amen. He was actually called God with us, Emmanuel. 
God with us. Wow. Amen. Okay. Now let's let's go to the scriptures and we're gonna um we're gonna read about uh, uh, uh Matthew uh one eighteen through twenty one first, okay? When um okay, let me go back. Uh here it is. Um all right. This is how uh, this is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to dis divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. All right, let's look, uh, let's dissect these scriptures. So, um, we're talking about destined to save from birth. Matthew opened this section with a description of the birth of Jesus. Matthew shared the private internal wrestling of Joseph, which began with the explanation that Jesus was conceived by the Holy Spirit while Mary was engaged to Joseph. Hallelujah! Can you imagine, uh, you know, Mary walking up to Joseph and saying, Guess what? Joseph, uh, I'm pregnant. I'm a child, you know? And. Uh, and Joseph knew that uh, they had known no intimate relations, so uh, so he was very confused. He was wondering what was going on. Okay, um, so um, and and then she tells him that the, this child was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Wow. Okay. Now there's not no no other precedence in the Bible for Joseph to to. Uh, you know, just believe her. Uh, so the verse further shares the fact that Jesus was born before Joseph and Mary were intimately involved. Joseph knew that the public red ridicule of an unwed pregnancy would be an awesome, heavy burden for Mary. Amen. Look at look at Joseph. He was always thinking about her. He was thinking about his wife, Mary. It would have been an embarrassment to him too, to both families, because they had just been engaged and uh, she was with child, she was pregnant. And so uh, it would have been a great embarrassment to both families. But Joseph was a good man, a just man. So he was worried about Mary. In fact, a premarital Pregnancy would have meant embarrassment for both families of the engaged parties. Although both Mary and Joseph were innocent of fornication, it would be hard to defend a pregnancy against accusations of apparent immorality. Can you imagine poor Joseph trying to explain that to the rest of the people? Uh, he said, well, my wife was impregnated by the Holy Spirit and people making all kinds of crude jokes about that. And, and laughing and mocking. and Oh, man. The pregnancy suggested that either Mary had been disloyal in the relationship or that both Joseph and Mary had dishonored the religious customs and laws of the culture. This verse reveals the moral character of Joseph. Aha! 
saying that he was a just man. Because of his devotion to God and respect for the law, Joseph contemplated the best way to end the marriage in a quiet, discreet manner. He was going to end it in a very quiet and discreet manner. The internal conflict is a reality for those who live in a culture uh, whose laws do not always fit God's plan, purpose, and process. By the way, the penalty for adultery under the law of Moses was death, being stoned to death. In Deuteronomy 22, 23-24, As Joseph pondered the best course of action, an angel of the Lord appeared telling him to proceed with the marriage without fear and explaining and explaining Mary's child was conceived by the Holy Spirit. So there it is. Joseph gets a confirmation. Amen. In a dream where, he, uh, where he's visited by an angel. The angel further revealed to Joseph that the child's name would be Jesus and explain the reason for the name from before his birth. Jesus was destined to be our salvation. The saving grace for God's people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. All right. Now let's go on uh, with verse 22 uh, through 25, okay? Destined to be with us from birth. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he did not consummate the marriage until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. Hallelujah. Matthew moves to connect the Jewish readers to the heritage by reminding them of Isaiah's prophecy concerning the birth of the Messiah, that a child would be born of a virgin. Aha! Isaiah 7 and 14. This was one of the prophecies uh, that was fulfilled among the several hundred. Matthew Introduce the child as Emmanuel, God with us. Hallelujah. Jesus was God with us. And then when he died and he rose again, he is God in us because he sent his Holy Spirit to live inside of us. Isn't that awesome? When he was there on the face of the earth, he was God with us. But now he's God in us. Hallelujah! Wow, that gets me all fired up. Which is more than a name or a title. The angel revealed that Jesus would not only be salvation, but also God incarnate. Dwelling on earth, which means God in human form. God dwelling in, in a human being. From this revelation, Joseph awakes from his dream and does not ponder, question, debate, seek any greater explanation of what has been shown to him. Clear that he is doing God's will, Joseph immediately proceeds to take Mary as his wife. Wow, do you see his obedience? You know, once he found out that this was what God wanted him to do, and this was true, that this child was being conceived by the Holy Spirit, he didn't st sit there and try to debate it or you know, figure it all out or anything. He just went and obeyed. Joseph's reaction to the angel is similar to that of Mary's. Luke 1 and 38. In that both had an immediate response to the word of God. Shared by angelic visitation. Aha! That response mirrored those of many others from the Old Testament. Who obeyed God's call without hesitation. Sometimes the things God requires may be contrary to popular thinking and common religious practices. Joseph pondered God's word to him, considered the matter, confirmed the instructions, and obeyed as God directed. Aha! You see that? Uh, wow! The text further notes in verse 25 
Joseph's discipline and integrity in refusing to consummate the marriage sexually until after Jesus' birth. As directed, the couple named the child Jesus. The official public naming took place in accordance with Jewish tradition eight days after his birth. See Luke 2.21. God has planted a gift within each of us. The moment we realize the presence of God's gift is when we must move by faith to understand and share the gift with others. Joseph and Mary understood early that Jesus was born for a purpose that was greater than the family life and identity that Joseph could provide. Joseph received Jesus as his own earthly child through public dedication at the temple. But Joseph and Mary both knew that Jesus was not just their child, but God's own son, a gift of salvation. Amen and amen. Now here's a question for you. What do you think? Have you ever refused to complete a spiritual task because you focus more on your own inability rather than trusting God's presence with you? Many times we do that, right? And we have history, even biblical history. You know, Moses said, told God, hey, listen, man, I, I can't even speak. I have a stuttering problem, you know. And, 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 and Jonah, for example, uh, God told him to go to Nineveh and proclaim judgment. He said, uh-uh, no, 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 no. He went in the opposite, exact opposite direction. And so on and so forth. There's so many examples right in the Bible, okay. So, Jesus was called as a savior before his birth. Jeremiah was des destined for prophetic ministry from the womb. See Jeremiah 1 and 5. Before I knew you, uh, I called you uh, before while you were yet in your mother's womb, the scripture says. Likewise, each of us has been ordained for a special purpose in the kingdom of God. If only we would understand that, then we wouldn't try to destroy one another out of jealousy. You know, there are 7 billion souls on the face of this earth. Uh, um, probably 3 to 4 billion that have not even heard of Jesus or are barely hearing of Jesus that need to be saved. And yet sometimes we, we, we fight and get jealous of one another. We are called to participate in God's promise to his people. Too often we seek God's promises for ourselves, seeking promotion and other personal gains. Isn't that sad? Isn't that sad? The gifts and promises of God are never for anyone's self-promotion or personal greatness. They are always given for the blessing and benefit of God's people. Remember that as you tap into your gift and begin to use it for God's glory, you'll be given honor to God. So, Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we humbly seek your guidance as we strive to align our wills with yours. You have blessed your entire creation with the, with the grace of your many gifts. Reveal your will to us and teach us to be humble as we labor to do your will and your work. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord give you his peace. We ask these things in Jesus' matchless name. And thank you for listening. And please be sure on, um, uh, on YouTube to, to subscribe to my broadcast. And you will automatically receive them once a week, okay? Uh, and if you don't want to listen to that, that's fine. But at least you'll be reminded once. Okay. Thank you. Bye.